Hello and welcome to all of our followers. My name is Stephanie Matson. I'm associate attorney here at the law offices of Beltran Brito Casimir. To my right. I am Gil Brito, a managing partner of Beltran Brito Casimir LLP. Today the topic we're going to be covering is essentially sponsorship in terms of the O-1 visa or the P-1 visa. In this case, generally, every O-1 visa needs what's known as a sponsor or according to the forms, a petitioner, right? Gen generally, generally work visas require sponsors. Correct. So non-immigrant work visas. A, a lot of times people are confused with the fact that, wow, for my green card on extraordinary ability, I'm an artist and I did not have to have a sponsor, yet on an O-1 visa, I have to have a sponsor. So yes, there is that requirement. But what's interesting is the various and different types of sponsors we can have for artists, for entertainers, for, for traditional ones, for non-traditional ones. Let's discuss a little bit the different types. So essentially, it could be described as having three types for the most part. There is what's known as the agent or the representative. Mm -hmm. The representative can be any essentially individual who's gonna petition for you. It's the fact of who that individual can be, correct? So that could be a traditional representative. It's gonna be, a, you know, it's gonna be somebody like a manager. It's gonna be somebody like an agent in a traditional agency format. That is the probably the most, when somebody thinks of an O-1 visa, that's the most traditional form of a sponsor. However, there's also the ability of an individual like a United States citizen or a green card holder, okay? It cannot be somebody that just has a work visa. It has to, it has to be somebody that is a green card holder as United States citizen acting as a representative for visa purposes. This is a very important point. So people have great confusion as to what are the actual responsibilities of that individual? There's a lot of confusion when you hear the word sponsor with U.S. immigration law because a lot of times people tie the, the word sponsor to what's called an affidavit of support, uh, where it's a family type of case where I'm I'm, I'm a spouse petitioning, you know, my, I'm a United States citizen spouse petitioning my spouse. Uh, I'm petitioning my children, for example. Uh, you're financially required for them in that setting. However, a sponsor in the traditional sense of an O-1 visa, especially a representative, it's whatever you guys agree to, okay? So whatever, whatever, for example, an artist agrees to with their representative, that is what is the responsibility of that individual. So traditionally, there is not a financial responsibility for that sponsor, quite the opposite. There's usually a percentage that's being earned by that agent, representative, manager from the individual's work in the future in the U.S., okay? So that's going to be, you know, traditionally the representative O-1 visa. Let's talk a little bit, Stephanie, about kind of what's more of the peer employment and what some of those jobs for peer employment look like. So the other option really is the employment category, which is essentially this company that is serving as your petitioner is also employing you. That's typical for sort of the jobs that are not the actor, the musician that are have agents that represent them for short-term employment. This is typical, for example, the best example I think is the chef. The chef is usually an O-1 artist for purposes of immigration, and what they do is they're being employed by this company, and the petitioner is usually the restaurant, the hotel group that's hiring the chef, and sure. so your petitioner is in fact your employer. That is a way to structure the O-1 visa where the actual company, the restaurant, is petitioning for Now, you. the question there is, can that chef now go work for multiple restaurants? No. So once you structure it in that fashion, once you have your employer as your petitioner, if you get a great opportunity to work at another restaurant, you should file, this is considered a material change, and you should file with immigration an amendment to go with another or, petition. Or, or, or a change of sponsor petition. A change of Just sponsor. a straight up change of sponsor petition. I, I could see the setting uh, where a chef, let's just say a celebrity chef, is representative by an agent, yeah. by an agent and has multiple opportunities. Television, uh, direct work with a restaurant, uh, speaking, uh, whatever's included. So, you know, what decides what somebody's able to do is what's stated within the actual petition. What did USCIS approve? What was stated in there? What's stated on your itinerary? So whatever that says, that's basically what you're able to do. So there's this idea that once I have an O-1 visa, I can do whatever I want. Uh, and that's just not true. Uh, it, it, it needs to be stated in the petition or it needs to be amended if it does require an amendment or a change of sponsor. Right. It's exactly how you structure from the get-go, how you structure from the beginning in your petition. Correct. So I, you know, what is that sponsor doing? So what, what do they have to add? What do those documents look like? What, what, what does that actually happen? How does that work with the sponsor? Usually it's going to be a, a letter that's going to come from the sponsor or the petitioner. We help you prepare that. This sponsor is going to talk about who the beneficiary is, who that talent is, what the agreement is, what you've agreed to, if they're going to be on multiple employment jobs or if they're going to be on working on 
a select few. And this person is also, this sponsor is also going to sign the forms for immigration purposes. Yep. Sometimes there's also, depends if it's more of a traditional representative, they might have an agency agreement, a, tr a traditional representative agreement, management agreement within their office that could be utilized for visa purposes uh, as long as it complies for the minimum requirements that USCIS requires. That is correct. Um, let's talk a little bit about uh, you know, uh, providing short-term employment and short-term employment, for example, is going to be a traditionally self-employed person, actor, musician, author, somebody, speakers, uh, you know, we, we see it a lot with O-1 visas. These are traditionally self-employed. So that sponsor is not required to pay you money, Correct. to pay you a salary. That sponsor is representing you for various jobs, short-term jobs. So and in that case, you need to provide work offers, uh, letters, that, you know, memorandums of, of understanding, evidence that you in fact are, have secured employment. It cannot be speculative employment. Technically, that sponsor is not only representing the beneficiary of the O-1 visa, the, the future O-1 visa holder, they're actually also representing that employer in front of USCIS. So there needs to be that agreement with that employer that it is okay for this sponsor to act as the visa petitioner. So that's just an added thing that, that people need to be aware of uh, and, and should be included in any future work offers. Essentially, yes. Um, there's a third option, Gil, that is if there's a foreign company, for instance, if you are in the UK and you have your agent in the UK and they have a US agent, that is an option as well. So if you have a foreign company that they have mm -hmm. a US agent, your US agent can be your US petitioner. Let's go more specific. Let's use a, a, something that we've done various times, which is there's an international uh, tour company for uh, musical groups, for musicians, for singers, for performers, and they actually don't have a US office. Uh, but there's a ton of dates coming up for a U.S. tour. So what's going to happen there is they will have a designated U.S. agent for visa purposes representing who? The foreign company. So the foreign company could bring its artists here to the U.S. to perform in multiple venues, to record albums, to do whatever whatever's outlined in the visa petition. But it, it's, it's one of the options that people really are not aware of. So there's a lot of companies outside the United States that could actually come and bring their artists to perform here. But they just, they don't actually have to have an office in the U.S., but they do need to have a representative here for visa purposes. Essentially, they're representing both the foreign company and all of the small employers are going to employ you for that That's work true. in the U.S. That is true. Okay. Uh, let me go ahead and check if we have any questions from our viewers. Can I have multiple sponsors? That is a fantastic question. Um, go for it. The answer is no. So essentially for visa purposes, you have one petitioner, one petitioner mm -hmm. only. If you have, you know... Uh, intent if you want to go ahead and change your sponsor is what we were discussing which you mm -hmm. change your sponsor very easy process really with immigration this is very interesting because you cannot have multiple sponsors but I can have multiple O-1 visas so yeah. in that sense I could have what's called concurrent O-1 visas this happens frequently well uh, for an actor for example will have his agent act as the the main visa petitioner to kind of to cover multiple small jobs but you might have a big name production company Company that also wants to serve as a visa sponsor of this individual and obtain what's called a concurrent visa. So I'll have the agent representative 01 and I'll have another visa concurrently at the same time that allows me to work with this specific employer. So no, you cannot have multiple sponsors, but you can actually have multiple 01 visas. I've personally seen up to four 01 visas, concurrent 01 visas for one individual at the same time. Uh, to allow them to perform in multi with multiple companies and multiple uh, jobs. Okay. Now, does that require to you to sort of stick to one sort of job category? Uh, that's really interesting. I'm going to say no. Uh, and my best example there, let me go back to like uh, a celebrity chef. I'm a celebrity chef and I'm going to have a show, a big time U.S. network. The U.S. network will get a visa just so that individual can go ahead and perform on that show with them and you could have a representative doing something. So there he's really not acting as a chef. He's going to be acting maybe as a judge on a show. Okay, and then we're going to go ahead and have that individual also work as a chef with a restaurant. Right. Uh, so in, in actually cooking, you know, so in that example, I'm going to say no, you, you could probably vary it up. I, I would also see a, a situation where we have very well known directors, producers, maybe on an open, uh, you know, kind of more of a representative O1 visa. Uh, and then we'll have 
that individual act in a, a series that is going to be sponsored individually by a production company. So there you have a director and then you also have an actor. That, that's going to be a typical one. And the other question essentially, Gil, is the sponsor, when the sponsor is an individual in the U.S. that is your representative, what is the criteria? Yeah, I mean, they have to be U.S. citizens or they have to be green card holders, okay? So it cannot be individuals that are on visas. It can't be it, it can't be somebody that obviously that's out of status in the U.S. It cannot be a foreign company without having the U.S. agent here either, okay? Right. I believe those are all our questions. Thank you to all of our viewers. You can find us on our social media platforms at Beltran Brito LLP. Stay tuned for the next video. Thank you.